our resident bar bouncer or cooler, Mike Sir, is going to show you a little bit of what he calls finger magic to control someone that's irritating you. This is taken from the art of Chin Na. Here's Mike Sir. We've dealt with, or we're dealing with all types of bodies, trained fighters, big guys, little guys, violent women, universal applications. One of the great things about the human body are the hands. I'm going to show you what I call finger magic. Finger magic means that we're going to either break the fingers, separate the fingers, we're going to use them for immediate pain application, takedowns, come alongs. Mark's here to help me demonstrate. As we apply this, I'll go over some basic principles, then we'll go live action and review that as well. The first thing we're going to apply is what we call finger splitting. It is just what we say it is. As a person grabs into you, typically their fingers are spread to grab material. We're going to take advantage of that. If the hand is together, we can still split the fingers. The idea is that we're not fighting a boxer with closed fists coming at us with strikes that would make these techniques impossible. This comes from an ancient Shaolin art. It's rarely talked about, but extremely effective. It's called Chin Na. The Chin Na was designed to overcome aggressive attackers. The monks were passive people. They used it to immobilize people and do it quickly and efficiently. We take advantage of these skills and apply it to our opponents. Mark goes for the grab, reaches. As he reaches, I simply grab his hand. We just call this trapping. I'm going to trap his wrist. As the fingers are spread, excuse me, spread, we're going to split the fingers. As I split the fingers, I simply choose any gap or anywhere near any gap, and my hand goes up to the fingers. As it goes up to the fingers, I'm going to begin to do a wrap. My pinky, the following finger, next finger, last finger is the index finger, and then I point. As I point, it begins to manipulate multiple joints. If Mark does not go down, it snaps the fingers. After snapping the fingers, the wrist snaps, so I'm snapping multiple joints. So we're going to come up. We're going to speed it up a little bit. He grabs. I'm going, to set, I'm going to grab, push aside. The key to getting this hand is what we call a soft block. I'm just going to grab, split, take any fingers I get, wrap the pinkies, and take down. Mark will immediately go down. If we want to add a little bit of footwork to this, I'm just going to step backwards. Mark grabs, split, step backwards. Mark goes down. Once I get him to this point, I'm going to give him verbal commands. Go to your stomach, go to your stomach, go to your stomach. Once I get him on the ground, I'll hold him here by his fingers. If he doesn't tap, we just go for the break. The great thing about breaking somebody's fingers is that most people stop fighting once their fingers are broken. A boxer can keep fighting with broken knuckles because he has gloves on. A bare knuckle fighter, once he breaks his knuckles, will tend to stop fighting. So a skilled, trained fighter, one of the things I'm going to do is try to break his fingers. A big guy, I'm going to break his fingers. A little guy, I'm going to break his fingers. And a woman that's violent and attacking me, I can break her fingers. Most humans will stop fighting. They'll want to tend to the broken bones. The more bones I break at one time, the more complex the breakage, the better the odds the person wants to stop fighting. Again, first finger split, person grabs, hands are relaxed, triangle stance. Same stance we know, split between the fingers. So we'll look at this view. I've split one finger at a time, wrap down, and down he goes. If I add the step backwards with this, split and down. Give your verbal commands, take the person down. Second finger split. The person actually makes contact with me. He reaches in and grabs. Just as he's grabbing, I put both hands over the top of his wrist, and I'm going to pull his grip off, both thumbs under his palm. I'm not going to try to break the wrist here. I'm simply going to wrap my hands around two sets of fingers, and the webbing between the fingers is what I'm going to tear. I'm going to separate that apart, push down on the hand. It's even more effective than the first finger split. Most people don't want these fingers split apart. We're going to tear that skin between the fingers, devastating breakage of the skin and muscularity. Most people will stop fighting at this point. Again, he actually beats me to the split. I don't get the trap in time. Both hands, take both hands, thumbs under the palm, push off, let your fingers slide up, begin your split, separate the skin, pull down, give your verbal commands down to your stomach, and man is down. So we have a choice. Finger split one, reach, I catch the hand, split, man goes down. Finger split two, gets his grab in, disconnect, split, take him down. Shake that off. Not comfortable on the hands. People, there are no way, there's no way to condition the skin between your fingers. 
There's no way to condition the fingers for flexibility. You're either born with that flexibility or you're not. The hand can only go so far back before the fingers break. Next technique we're going to use is called pushing palm. From the same origins, individual shakes our hand, gives us the death grip. Starts to smash my hand, don't like it. I simply take my opposite hand, push behind. We typically in America shake with our right hand, means my left hand is going to go right behind the wrist and turn that in. That begins the breaking process. I'm then going to just slide this hand up behind the elbow, keep that bend going, push the elbow in. At this point, I just let the slack go to the fingers, keep contact with the elbow. He's either going to have to tap out or the wrist breaks. I can also steer him around where I want him to go. I just guide him with his hand, and I'm using this as a rudder, the palm. Again, we'll just go over that some more. Shake my hand. I don't like what I'm feeling. Left hand, put just behind the palm of the hand at the wrist. Push across the body, slide the hand down behind the elbow, push the palm in to the body. If you want to drive him away, simply push the wrist, drive him away. One more time, shake the hand here, in. To take him down, we're going to raise it up. He'll want to go down. Same technique, push in, push up, the man will want to go down. Up, excellent. Next technique is a come along. A come along means I just want him to go wherever I'm going. I want to escort him out of the building. As a cooler or a bouncer, there may be situations that call for me to have somebody leave. Somebody is where they don't need to be, I'm going to take him with me. Great for teamwork. If I have another bouncer beside me talking to this individual, he's not paying attention to me, I'm simply going to take my hand relaxed into the palm of his hand. Slide his elbow with my opposing hand into this pocket then bend the fingers down. Without Mark's hand, technique looks this simple. Without aggressively grabbing the hand, if I aggressively grab, the, aggressively grab his hand, he's going to pull it away, and I've lost my technique. If I come up, place my hand softly on the palm of his hand, trap the inside of the elbow, tuck it in between our arms. Now I'm going to bend my pinky finger, or excuse me, my index finger, down towards me. Mark begins to try to alleviate the pressure and go up. I can reinsert it. Now, Mark, we're going to take a walk. Mark goes wherever I want to go. Excellent. So, let's look at the hand trap. Index finger is going to push his finger away from his body. This keeps him from rolling out. If I want to make the technique a little more brutal, I let the other fingers go, isolate one finger at a time with multiple fingers. If I want to go for the break, I just pull the fingers all the way down. Again, quick come along, relax, tuck it in, walk him off the set. Excellent. Let's review real quick. Finger split one, soft block, down he goes. Finger split two, he gets his grip. Here, split, down he goes. Excellent. Palm push from the handshake. Here, push, slide in, palm push. Get him away from you. Come along. I want to take him off this area. We're relaxing, talking to my friend. Excellent. Trap. Mark's going to go wherever I go. Excellent. I've studied uh, the particular art. It's called Chin Na. It's a Shaolin art. The Shaolin monks didn't want to be bothered by anybody. They didn't want to be harmful to anybody. So they would study the fingers and the manipulation of fingers. It became small circle jujitsu. I was lucky enough to train under a particular master for years. He became one of the only West Coast instructors in this art before other people had begun to catch on. So I've used it in the uh, nightclub setting. Uh, bounty hunting or uh, protective services, working with government and doing some dangerous work down in South America. I've used it in hostile situations and I've used it in uh, humor situations. Uh, it can only be used against a, a, a non-fighter or against a person that hasn't gone to complete fight mode and is cl clenching their fists and throwing complete blows. If you try to use this type of finger magic on people that are throwing blows, you're going to have to be really proficient at it like I am to really make it work. So we're going to try to use it as a, as, as a surprise. So we've used it on surprise. Uh, the come-alongs that you see that we do with those come-alongs and control that person's arm and lock them in. Uh, I've walked out women, men, uh, anybody that's given us a hassle, uh, in particular bars. Uh, I do it so fast that what happens is, the reason we call it finger magic is when it happens, the, nobody else can figure out what's happened to the person because that person goes down or starts to shake the hand or is, well, usually starts to dance around because we've broken one or two or three fingers in such a way that that's going to take maybe six months to heal. It's so painful uh, that they usually start running. 
So it looks like you've just touched them and then they take off running and people said, would say to us, well, what kind of magic was that? Well, that's finger magic and that's uh, manipulating. So we get a lot of people in this business trying to grab us. A lot of women trying to grab, a lot of men trying to grab shirts. Uh, on many occasions I've been standing having a nice conversation with somebody saying, you know, it's time to go and they go ahead and grab for the shirt, split those fingers, take them down and then we give them the option to stop. And usually after they've been drinking for a while their pain response is a little slower. So yeah, many times I've had to actually just snap that finger down and take it for the break. And then I'll usually turn it into a larger manipulation or we'll do some groundwork such as, you know, knee on back, knee on head to hold them down. Because when they've been drinking a lot that pain response can be completely turned off and they won't stop.